Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome. Well, today's video is a crafting life catch up. How I discovered some joy in knitting and crochet again after all the feedback from my lovely subscribers. Birthday gifts, Mother's Day gifts, finished objects, what inspired me, Eurovision and whips. There's quite a bit to get through, so grab yourself a cover. I've got some tea here and a project and let's get to it. First of all, welcome to these new subscribers. It's great to see the channel growing. I have small goals. <laughs> My goal is I'll reach 2,000 subscribers by Christmas, but it is going well. I know these new subscribers, I hope you enjoy the content. Um, sometimes it's short, sometimes it's long, and sometimes I have a few things and sometimes I have a lot of things to show you. So guys, let's get started first of all birthday i got some really lovely birthday gifts from some subscribers and friends so first of all mel the beanie queen she gifted me a pattern on my wish list if you haven't checked out her channel please do so she doesn't post a lot of videos but she is there and she has great content and she's in western australia so she gifted me the pattern of Grandma. And Grandma is a pincushion. You stick the pins in her rump. I've had this in the wish list a while. It's not going to be easy to make. I think there's a lot of pictures, so it should be okay, but there are 18 pages. So I think it's going to be quite an involved Amigurumi project, but I do love it. And thank you, Mel. I really appreciate you thinking of me, especially if you've gone through a difficult time at the moment. So yeah. Grandma, it's available on Ravelry. All the channels, patterns, tutorials, anything I talk about that I remember, I'll put in the description box below the links for you to check out if you're interested. The second pattern I got as a gift from my lovely friend and subscriber, it was in my wish list, and it's Grandma, I oh, it's Studio Wow. It's by Studio Wow, sorry. And I I didn't look at how much they were. The second one was from the lovely Karen in Adelaide. Hi Karen. And it is by Twinset and Pearl. And is the shallow arrow, arrow wrap, come shawl, come whatever you want to make it. And I'll show you the pictures on the back. These are paid for patterns, of course. There you go. Now, I really like this. And there is a reason I want to get started making this. But my problem is, I don't know what to use. So I think this one, she had a main color and seven 80 gram minis, but I've used most of my minis. I think I've got two left. I need some minis. I looked at this and thought, oh, there's my Mallow Brago uh, muscle bar hat. And then I looked at this. So I guess I've gone through my yarn stock or stash because I really do want to make this fairly quickly or I may even enter it in the craft fair if it turns out well. So for me, it's going to be down to two colors, but I can't decide on color combinations. So in the comments below, let me know what you think. Which one would you choose? So this one is Zaka my yarn that I bought in Scotland at the um, Scottish Wool Festival. So there's that color combination, which is a variegated, and it doesn't really have a color. It's hand dyed in Edinburgh. It's 100% um, Corridale, and then 437 yards, and it's fingering weight, because the pattern is in fingering weight. And the other one I thought of putting with it is this one. The problem is I don't know if two variegated would go well. This is Sunshine Blush from Black Waddle Yarn, which is an Australian company. Same sort of co uh, fibre content, hand dyed and 400 metres. This is called a Sweet Pea Yarn, um, Sweet Pea Four Ply, which is equal to fingering weight. So that's the first combination, combination one. Combination two is this one. It's more subtle. And it does have a solid color so except 
I've had it a while and it does seem to peel even in the bowl, in the hank. So this is black wattle yarn, sweet pea, poor ply. It could be just where I've had it stocked or stored. This one is coral bark and is a more muted, I guess, variegated yarn. And then this one is also a black wattle yarn, but I've lost the label. And it's got some pinks and creams and it'd be a more subtle wrap. So this is combination two. Let me know in the description box or the comment box below which one you like the best, which you think I should make it from. So that was Shallow Arrow by Twin Set and Pearl. These are all on Ravelry and I'll put them in the description box below. Thank you, Karen. I love it. And there's a reason I want to make it, which I'll tell you at the end of the video. So that was, um, oh, birthday. My friend Ulia gave me something really unique. We caught up last Saturday at Crochet for Cancer. And she this is her birthday gift. Ta-da! You sit your ball of yarn on there. You put it on your wrist and while you're working. And it's to stop you dropping your yarn on the floor or losing your ball of yarn under the coffee table. Isn't that awesome? It's made of wood and I can't, it was in packaging but it didn't have where it came from. But I really like that. I put it together all year. Yeah, and I'm going to try that out. She also, because she knows I collect ceramic polar bears. If you're new to the channel, polar bears are my number one favourite animal and I collect ceramic ones. I have an extensive collection. She gave me this little fella. Isn't he cute? He's got such a sweet face. So he goes in with my collection. I also get hiccups a lot when I do a video. One of the things I got for my... Um, so we move on to Mother's Day. I did get things from Reeves and um, Thing, but not crafty things. I didn't ask for any crafty things. I did get a trolley that will help me at uh, craft markets to move things around. Reeves, um, Thing bought me that. Reeves bought me some um, electronic equipment to help me when I travel overseas. Yeah, it was a lovely birthday, even though I had quite a sore mouth still from the dentist. So then we move on to Mother's Day. I hope you all had a lovely Mother's Day. I did. It was awesome. Reeves made me, if you follow me on Instagram, I think I put it, he made waffles from scratch. He used homegrown dragon fruit and ice cream. I put there on my seafood diet, which means I seafood and eat it. But yeah, they were delicious. I haven't had waffles in years. The other thing he did, besides the usual Mother's Day gifts he gives me, he did something really unique. We've been going through old photos and clearing out a bit since the flood. And he framed an old photo of him and Ronsky, who lives in London. This photo is 30 years old. It's a bit jaded in colour, but it was really touching. It's when we lived in WA, we did a, a tour up to the Northern Territory and down the middle of Australia. And this is a photo of Ronsky and Reeves 14 years ago, taken at Litchfield National Park in the Northern Territory. The reason he framed it is, this is Ronsky. He really smiled in a photo and he's actually smiling. And the reason we know how old it is is because Reeves is wearing his Charlotte Hornets hat and his basketball shirt. He was a big fan of basketball. He is baseball, basketball, ice hockey, sumo wrestling. He loves all sports. But there you go. That's the two boys 30 years ago and he framed it for me, which is lovely. I really was touched. He then blew it because he blew it with a card. It's a very plain card, but it made me laugh. Mum, don't worry, I won't put you in a home in brackets this year. Happy Mother's Day. It was a... Da -dum, da -dum. It is a charity card he bought. Ovarian Cancer Research Foundation he got it from. But yes, we always joke about he's going to put me in a home and he goes, I'll never put you in a home. I'll just send you to London and Ronsky can look after you. I've had you all these years. I did get another lovely birthday present. I forgot to mention that I finally opened the last one from Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. I really love it. It's a book, A Sweet 
Sweet friendship refreshes the soul. Proverbs 27.9 And on each page there's a proverb, 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 I can't never say that word. It's a Christian arts gift from the USA. The first page is delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desire of your heart. And then it's 37.4. My eyes aren't great. But there you go. It's a lovely notebook. And each time I open to a new page, I'll have a nice little proverb to take to heart. So thank you, Barbara. I really love it. Your birthday gift, which I opened over the month, was just amazing. I really cherish everything you send me. So that's about it for birthday, Mother's Day. I'm um, off. Oh, the elephant in the room, the shelving on my back cupboard. This is inside because it's not sealed yet. Thing made it for me. It does collapse down. It is for my craft store to display products. You'll see the koala card from Ulia. Um, that's because she said she couldn't find a polar bear card so she had to sell for koalas, which aren't bears, by the way. But yes, Thing made that over two weeks in the shed. I wasn't allowed in there. I was bashing and crap. And he made me this very solid collapsible stand, which is easy to put down. It's just sitting there until it's um, sealed and I wanted to show it. He's got about two weeks before he goes to Spain. So better get a move on. But yes, that was another lovely present because I really needed some display things for my craft store. So getting to I lost my crafting joy and feedback. I really appreciate all the feedback. There was um, take a break from it, try an easy project, go through your old whips, find something you love. Um, that sort of feedback. Um, others would say try a new craft, try a new podcaster. And I took all that on board and I did do a few things that were different. Well, first of all, this is I don't know whether to, I'll do that at the end because I think it's more related to something else. Well, recently I've been following one, the yarn addict, and I started his cow this month. Yes, I know I wasn't going to do more cows, but I started this one and I love it. It's called the Spring Thing Throw. It came about because, sorry, I have about four cakes of this mandala yarn that is called troll janice um, in victoria sent me some and i had some that i would bought on special when it was on special not all of them have the same center but i kept thinking i really start need to start using some of the bigger cakes and balls of yarn in my stash and he released his make along which is the spring things throw yes the things got me in and I thought, well, I'll give it a go. I've never really been keen on doing lots of different stitches when I've done them with other cows. The, the throw goes wonky. They don't work. This one is just amazing. So I've just finished week two early this morning because I was a little behind. I never show whips, but here we go. Oh, not never. I rarely. There you go. That's my two weeks of the spring thing throw with one the yarn addict it may need a little bit of blocking but not much it is really it has like a ridge row at the end of each week and I really like it and I think it's working out well in this yarn it will probably take about three cakes I am going to be doing it a bit smaller I am using a four millimeter crochet hook um, which they recommend which surprised me they recommend a five millimeter but I went down because I want to try and keep it to a smaller size that's appropriate for me a fit for purpose I guess to give to charity but it is lovely and the thing about it is I'm doing this one and thinking oh, I could do a second one in that yarn but I do love it and you know why I love it stitch count every time it, it spins up four stitches if it if one doesn't fit, it vetoes it and puts another one in. But 
it takes you to each corner and you've got stitch count for the long sides and skit stitch count for the short sides and he's such so clear in presenting his um, tutorial and he's made it really easy so I am enjoying doing something with different stitches and this has really brought me a lot of crafting joy so far that's all that's left of cake one and I haven't color controlled well it is going to be a long video <laughs> um, the next thing I did well I don't have a picture of it because I gave it away I donated it last week to crochet for cancer I decided to do an easy project while watching some Grand Prix and Eurovision and I did a throw and a matching beanie. I did the Sober Granny by Krista at Secret Yarnery. I'll have photos of it at the end. I used the last of my Magnum Soft 8 ply in royal blue and grey. We don't do a lot of blankets that are in men, like suitable for men's colours, but this turned out really well. I have one ball of grey left in that. And um, if I can't, it's really soft. Oh. It's incredibly soft. If I can't think what to use it for, I will donate it again next time I go to crochet for cancer for the ladies who use the donated yarn, which they get some enjoyment making something because the yarn is too expensive for their budget. So we all donate a bit of yarn. And often, um, like grey is a good colour, contrast colour. And we often need beanies. So that's my... Um, I guess was my easy project being inspired by a, a podcaster and a new cow was one and some of the old things I went back and the bod had a palooza of the last two weeks has been fit for purpose so the first one I've made is this one was called and I tracks this is the tracks beanie I really like this I did do I use a five millimeter crochet hook. This is an eight ply um, yarn, same as the Magnum Panda Soft, except this one, because I have one ball of this color left too. Sorry, I have to get them out of the big bag. Is Carnival Soft eight ply. And it's very similar to the Magnum, but yeah, that's the color I use. That wall's falling apart, I'll have to rewind it. But that's the track spinny. I really like it. Um, it did turn out a bit bigger than I thought, but it's still ideal and still a good flat neutral colour for me to donate. So that wasn't this week's, that was last week's. And then using again the Magnum Soft, I have one ball of this lavender colour, and this week's was Parallel Lines or Parallel Universe, and that's that one there. And I made that one and I used a four millimeter crochet hook. No, yeah, four millimeter crochet hook on that one. So these are all three weight eight ply, really soft. And I made some, I've used most of that up. There's a little bit of a scrap left, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. The only thing I did different with this because of the four millimeter hook is I did the track, the lot lines, and then I did two rows of double crochet instead of finishing there because it was a bit short. And then I did like the ridge of, that she has there again. And then I did six rows of single crochet. Six, one, two, three, four, five rows of single crochet. And it made it the right length. So that's the beauty of um, crystal botted uh, bag of days hats. You can always continue them on and change them a bit and make them fit for purpose. So I visited old cows and old whips and did that. That was that inspired me again. So that's basically some of the finished objects. My next thing is Eurovision. Now, I, if you don't know what it is, it's a song contest held every year and it's been held for a number of years. This year it was held in Sweden. It was 50th anniversary of ABBA winning it with Waterloo. Not that they made a big deal of that. I'm not going to get into the politics of this year's Eurovision. It was tragic and terrible. Absolutely terrible. I can't believe a song contest could deteriorate this low. 
Um, the Australian commentators who did ours were absolutely outrageous and disgusting. Commentators are there to be objective and talk about the songs, not let their um, drinking habits, their, their, who they're lusting after, and um, their politics into the commentary. Um, I actually lost it and had a bit of a rant on my personal Facebook page twice because we watched the semis and then we watched the final ribs and I we really enjoy it. We like listening to the music and trying to pick who's going to win. So the politics, obviously it was to do with Israel competing. Um, and I'm not going to get into, well, first of all, two rights don't make a wrong. Um, or is it two wrongs don't make a right? Something like that. And we should always remember history should never repeat itself. And hate begets hate. I take everybody at face value. I don't care who they are, what they are, what religion, what politics. You know, it's just a song contest. Anyway, my favourites, and I will put a music playlist just so you can find out what Eurovision is and whether you enjoy music and a little music with a little difference. For my number one favourite was a group called Baby Lasagna from Croatia. Second was Nemo. If you're looking for Nemo, he lives in Switzerland. Eden of Israel. Now, I can't pronounce the, the two groups that banded together for Estonia. They were great guys. And Don's from Latvia. Having said that, it's no, um, I'm not releasing or um, you don't have to look away. The winner was Nemo from Switzerland and Baby Lasagna came second. And yes, they all did different music and beautiful songs and they are talented young people and should be encouraged regardless of what country, religion, ethnicity they are. It should be that we should encourage our young to explore their creative purpose and make it a better world anyway one of the projects i haven't shown you and i did do a eurovision project i started one this was my second easy to follow project here it is and i was using all the bright colors turning up in eurovision this is the brick stitch by bag day i really like this this is going to be a smaller throw and because of all the ends, I'll probably envelope the edge. But that's how far I've got so far. What I'm doing is I do two rows and I'm putting grey in between. But I'm not sure I like the way it's turning out. So next, I'm going to keep doing it because I want to use up this yarn. This is Marvel 8-ply from Spotlight. There is a lot of it in my stock. And yes, that's what I was doing during Eurovision. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy, keeping the ends straight. And um, I will continue on. I was just very disappointed in Eurovision, the politics of Eurovision, and forgetting that it's a song contest. Um, what else is there? I'm trying to think. There is so much I've done the last few weeks. So, whips. No, one finished object. Now, I put this on Instagram quite a while ago, but I don't think I showed it in a video. And we celebrate Anzac Day, um, which is in memory of our service people who fought in the wars, all us and even our first responders today are in Jan in end of April, April the 25th. And I usually do poppies or something with poppies and make tea cozy. And I actually did explore back then a mood board with another podcast and I put together a mood board and then I did my tea cozy. I'm not sure I got the brief of the mood board right. But anyway, I will put it in the mood board at the end with a picture of my tea cozy. But here it is. My poppy tea cozy for Anzac Day. And the reason I'm showing it now. See, I went really different. It's all knitted. Even the poppies. I've never done knitted poppies or knitted centers like that. I don't know if you can see them that way there they've even got eyelash yarn and I put stalks and stems through it but this is my poppy tea cozy I really like it I really enjoyed making the knitted poppies for a change rather than crochet but 
Um, the reason I thought I'd show it now is um, y.o.h crochet Anita put together a Memorial Day pattern list for different patterns you can try and I really enjoyed watching that video so that'll be a link in the description below if you on a Memorial Day and even though it's for most of them are for the USA I can always adapt the colors for my country. Our sports people usually wear green and gold and that's usually when I just change the colours in the pattern to represent Australia. So make sure you check out her Memorial Day. There are lots of great patterns in there, some free, some paid for. But I like the way she puts the list together. She does all the research for us. So that was my mood, my first attempt at a mood board. Um, and that was my mood at the time. It came about after a discussion Reeves and I had something terrible in Australia happened. And X, formerly Twitter, refused to remove the footage. The government were taking him to court. And I made the conscious decision that day. I don't really need to see that on my social media. There are other ways if you want to see it, it should be removed. And I removed myself from X and Twitter. I'm no longer on that. I don't need to see all that. Um, the news brings it to us. It's not that I want to live in a bubble. I just think if you want to see that sort of gory, horrible thing, there are games for kids that show it. There are other ways of seeing it. And they should make a conscious decision to remove it. It came about that. Then Reeves was asking me about the 90s. Was the world like this in the 90s? He doesn't recall it. And that's how we got onto social media, how it's changed everything. It's there in an instant. It's so bad. One of our channels, uh, news channels, has had to sell out of court because this incident in Australia, they showed a picture of a guy and named him and it wasn't him. And he's gets a settlement because of course they ruined his reputation and it wasn't him it was someone with the same name but a different guy and that's because they're so quick to be the first so yeah I've made a conscious decision I won't be following Twitter anymore or posting on Twitter or X as they call it um, I don't need to there are plenty of other social out, uh, platforms that I enjoy so and that's how my mood board came about. And yeah, I'm not sure if that was the, the idea of the mood board, but it was therapeutic for me looking at that. And let's not forget that um, we should be learning from history and changing and evolving as people and, and being kind to each other. Anyway, guys, I've been working on whips. Yes, I'll talk about them. I won't show them. I started a whip for the craft fair when I bought all that yarn from um, Wool Warehouse. I've actually started that and done almost finished one side of that project. And it's going well. It looks okay. I did show Ulia and another lady at the um, meeting last week. And it is knitted. And the other thing, I've been working on my Cafe Bev cardigan which was a gifted pattern from Laura Madmini's crochet and farming however because it, it is 209 stitches for me and it's crochet and it, it's fairly straightforward but my mistake was to be doing it during Eurovision and I got angry and I'm not very good with stitch count I have to check constantly and I discovered today because I went to pick it up early hours this morning that instead of being at 209 I was at 213 even though the edges were straight because the pattern row wouldn't work and I had to frog back 10 rows to where my mistake had occurred and that's when you getting angry at something don't crochet or knit that's me I was like uh, over what was happening with Eurovision but it is coming along and that's another project I want to finish fairly soon. The reason I want to finish that and shallow arrow is, well, I'm off on a holiday in September. I'm going to the UK to see my son. Um, Thing leaves in two weeks for his things he does in Spain and he'll meet me in the UK. That bit's all organised. We've decided we may go from um, London to Prague and then from Prague to Vienna 
and then from Vienna to Munich and fly home from Munich because that's where we have to fly out of. Um, we haven't really booked any of that. There's no rush. Our travel agent, um, well, this current travel agent is taking care of it. She's just made sure that things got everything and he's on his way and my tickets are all booked for London so that we meet up. I think I'm there an hour before him. But yes, I'm going on a holiday in September, not August, and it gets cooler. And I'd really like to finish my cafe beverage card and take it with me. And I'd like to finish the shallow arrow. So it's important. I don't want to buy more yarn to do the contrast. So these are the contrasts for the shallow arrow. Let me know what you think. It's hard coming up with an absolute flat colored yarn. I may have one very similar to this that I've got to hunt out that I bought from um, Stephen and Penelope in Amsterdam and that might be better. Anyway guys, that's me. A long one for me. I don't usually wrap it on this long. I'll just check that I've covered everything I wanted to do. Yeah, so there'll be lots of things in the description box below. There'll be patterns for you to check out. Um, tutorials for you to check out um, music lists just to have on while you're crocheting away and enjoy some music that's different my poppy tea cozy is a basic design by me it's a basic tea cozy and then I get creative with the top there is no pattern or book for that but if you knit my basic tea cozy which there is a pattern on sale for I'll put a link to that um, it's on Kofi, I think. And you find and there's five thousand poppies. I'll link that that has the knitted, the crochet poppies. You could make your own uh, from that. It's fairly easy. And just be creative. And if you do make one, please send me a picture, paste post it on our Facebook group if you're part of that group, or post it on um, Instagram and hashtag me. That so I can see it. I'd really love to see it if you make one. So that's it from me. It's been a busy couple of weeks. Um, I had a big meeting this week, but I have sort of done quite a bit. Work life is starting to slow down. And yes, I am looking forward to getting away. Um, I feel like I need a bit of a holiday. It's been a full on year and it'll be great to catch up with my son in London. And I'm excited about Prague and Vienna because I've never been and everyone tells me they're really beautiful. So until next time, stay safe, stay well, and remember, be kind to each other because hate begets hate. Bye for now.